Hello friends, welcome to the Take Better Photos channel. We're here with another video. And in this video, I'm going to be talking about how to use the Hue Range Mask, which is new with Affinity Photo 2.0. If you're interested in the other live mask, which is called Luminance Range Mask, I also made a video on that. And do check that out. That is also extremely useful. But right now we are focused on the hue range mask and how is this going to be useful in your raw editing. So here we have a raw image and obviously it is very underexposed, but I do like the colors that it has produced. So the normal thing we're going to be doing here is just make some slight adjustments to just bring out a little bit of detail, which will further enhance with the hue range mask. So let me just lower down the highlights a little bit and then a little bit of the shadows. Okay, not too much. Okay, so that's just it, just a little bit. And now let's work with the layers here to further enhance this. Let's just click on develop. Now we are in the photo persona where we could work with layers. How would we normally edit this? In this case, and the interesting part of this photo is this firework display which was captured handheld, by the way, with a very old Nikon. And then you have this nice scene of a bunch of spectators looking at it, admiring it. And I do really enjoy this photo. But I never did like the shadows. I never did like that the foreground here was too underexposed. We're going to use Affinity Photo to correct this. So how would you normally correct this? So in the traditional way, before Affinity Photo 2, you'd probably use something like a selection brush. And you would have to go through and click on each of these elements here. All right, so let's say you're interested in just the spectators, this foreground area. You have to go one by one and do that. And as you can see, this is not an easy task because all the, the edges here are very irregular. And the edges are not necessarily very distinct as well. It's very prone to make errors and you have to go one by one here to actually make the, a very precise selection. As you can see, it's making mistakes all over the place. And the reason there is the edges are not very distinct. They're both extremely dark. You can imagine that this is a very difficult task here. However, one thing we notice is the foreground area has a blue hue which is quite distinct. So whenever you have an image with a particular color that is ripe for use with a hue range mask. So how do you use the hue range mask? So first, let's choose our adjustment and I'm gonna choose just an exposure adjustment with this. Now you might say, why am I choosing an exposure adjustment? Let me just go back to develop persona here, all right? So if I wanted to adjust this and then I use an exposure adjustment, right? I do that, okay? So it nicely brightens up the foreground, but it also hits this firework display, which is not what I want. I want to keep the detail in the fireworks. So I can't use the exposure adjustment. So the normal thing people might do is just choose the shadow adjustment, like so. But you can see brightening it up like this with a shadow adjustment doesn't look great at all. You see that? Okay, so that is the reason why I'm using an exposure adjustment because the shadow adjustment doesn't really look good. So I'm just gonna go to develop here. So what I wanna do is to make that exposure adjustment, but only keep it to this blue foreground here. So let's add the exposure adjustment. We first click on the adjustments button, right? I'll just choose exposure. Okay, so we have the exposure adjustment. And now let's enhance it a little bit. There you go. So. It's looking nice for the foreground, but not great for the background. So we need to mask this out. In order to select this properly, we can use the hue range mask. How do we add the hue range mask? So what we can do here is just to click on the mask layer button, choose hue range mask here, like so. So for the hue range mask, what you wanna do is to pick the color that you want to focus on, okay? So let's, pick a color here and I want to focus on the color blue 
which is common to this entire foreground. So I'm just going to click on blue here. And you can see if I click on preview, that the mask is pretty good, right? Without doing anything, without doing any brushing, we were able to select a majority of the foreground. And you can move this widget around to select different parts here, right? So you can see here that if you're in the red area, it's the sky that is getting selected. If it's the green area, there's no green in the scene. And if I move it up, up here, then the foreground is properly selected. So I want to move this widget to the point where most of the area is included, like so. So I think this one looks fine. And this is a good mask because I have the sky perfectly black because I don't want the sky to be affected at all with this exposure adjustment, just this foreground. All right, so that's created, simple as that. And so when I click on the adjustment layer, so you can see now that the, the foreground is nicely brightened and I can control this, of course, right? I can control this and it's nicely masked out. So let's not overdo it because we don't want to make it unnatural. Now, how about the sky? Can we use a hue range mask for the sky? Looking at it, it seems so because it has a very red hue to the sky, which is distinct from the blue foreground. And so I think we can use a hue range mask for the sky as well. So let's just do that. So for the sky, I'm going to try to reduce the brightness with a curves adjustment. So let's just add the adjustment first. So I'm going to choose curves here. And then I'm just going to lower the brightness here. Okay, so now you can see we're seeing more detail in the fireworks, but it's affecting the foreground, which I don't like. So I need to mask this out again. Click on mask layer, choose the hue range mask. And then I'm going to click preview so I can see the mask. I'm just gonna choose the picker and just choose somewhere in the sky. And you can see now it's pretty good. The sky area is selected in white, which is perfect, right? But let's move it around and see. We can get a better mask. All right, so it's somewhere in the red area here. Okay, maybe this one is pretty good, okay? Let's just close that. All right, let's just click on the curves adjustment here. And you can see that the sky is nicely um, selected. Right, and you can see there's no halos at all in this image, despite the extreme adjustments we have made. If you want to reduce the brightness of the sky further, maybe we can go back to develop persona. So let's just close this. I'm gonna click on the raw layer here, click on develop persona, and then I will lower the highlights here a little bit more. But I guess that's pretty good. All right, so this was the before and the after. Before and the after. So that was Hue Range Masks. So I hope you saw that Hue Range Masks is a very powerful feature in an Affinity Photo 2.0. Do let me know in the comments if you're going to be using this or you have used this before. I hope you learned something in today's video. And if you did, I'd really appreciate if you subscribe, like, and share this content to help keep the videos coming. And till the next video, I'm going to see you in the next one. Bye for now.